energy media readers, over the last uh, 10 days or so, there's been a couple of significant announcements from the Alberta government and the Alberta Energy Regulator about uh, environmental monitoring and uh, policies that are a little bit disturbing. And we talked about one of them back, uh, an, early, an earlier version of it back in March with Professor Sean Fluker from the University of Calgary. We're going to talk to him about these two recent announcements. So welcome to the interview, Sean. Glad to be back. So when we talked in March, the government had decided to that it was going to uh, not require companies to send in data, but the monitoring would still be taking place. And the announcement that came last week was that now the monitoring doesn't have to be done either. And the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic is used as the excuse for why, you know, worker safety and so on is the excuse for, for not doing this. What do you make of that? Well, it, it, it seems that, you know, there's been some, dis, you know, there's been discussions between industry and certainly the Alberta Energy Regulator for some time and, and probably the Minister of Energy and the Minister of Environment as well, because, you know, so the Minister of Energy and the Minister of the Environment both issued orders early on in the pandemic, suspending reporting requirements. And now um, we've seen a, a few decisions issued by the Alberta Energy Regulator uh, that uh, suspend the monitoring requirements that um, you know uh, hadn't been suspended by the by the ministers. So, um, you know, I would think that these have been discussions that have been going on, um, you know, for for some time now, and and it it looks like. Um, you know, and those discussions continued until there was an agreement between the regulator and industry as to what exactly uh, would be suspended or, or could be suspended. And that's what we've seen uh, in these recent decisions issued by the, uh, by the regulator. One of your concerns, I know, is that there wasn't much discussion, nor was there much description when these uh, changes were announced. And, and that leads, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't look good. And it kind of leaves critics of the industry, critics of Alberta, free to uh, write their own uh, uh, explanation for why it was happening. And they seem to have lost the narrative here, lost control of the narrative. Yeah, so uh, it's been fairly consistent, um, you know, throughout all of these decisions that um, there isn't there isn't really an explanation or much uh, given in terms of the causal connection between the health and safety risks associated with these activities um, that um, can be linked to COVID-19 and the need for, for the relief. And so, you know, certainly there's probably going to be some monitoring activity where maybe there's larger groups in question and, you know, the protocols that the chief medical officer has issued can't be met and, and and you know relief is needed, but that's not going to be the case for all of these um, uh, monitoring requirements. Where um, I, you know the, certainly some of them uh, certainly could be met. So you know by not giving the explanation, uh, the decisions let others um, fill in the gap. And um, as you put it, uh, it certainly allows for critics of the industry to suggest that. Um, a lot of these decisions are um, perhaps more about cost cutting, cutting measures than, than, than they are necessarily in relation to the pandemic. And, you know, I think that's a narrative that uh, the Alberta government uh, um, should, should want to uh, keep its hands on. Yeah, it's especially true in light of the revelation that the Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers had submitted as its part of the financial, the COVID-19 financial support package. It wanted, uh, it was 13 pages of asking for climate and environmental regulations to be either uh, delayed or relaxed or simply not implemented. And it kind of looks like the Alberta gov government gave uh, industry what it wanted uh, instead of Canada. It kind of looks, it looks that way, whether it is or not, uh, that's, you can see where the narrative would go. So what about the, the coal policy now, Sean? So th there was this 1976 coal policy. Last time it was updated, the government says that it's just a, a regulatory um, update. What's your take? Well, the coal policy that's being rescinded, you know, was, was published in 1976. So the need to update it, you know, that, that does, you know, that, 
uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot, a lot of merit to that. Um, and as many of your listeners will know, Alberta has been engaged in uh, a revamp of its land use planning regime for, for many, many years now. I think we're, we're closing in on 15 years. And there, the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan, for example, is, has been in force for many, uh, for many years now. And that policy itself talks about a, a review of the coal policy to make sure that what's in there lines up with um, what was set out in the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan. So, you know, a revamp of the coal policy, I think, has been on, has been on the books for, for some time. Uh, the problem here is that that coal policy is being rescinded and uh, the regional land use plans that would apply to the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains north of the Bow River aren't in place yet. So the rescission of that coal policy has in effect created a policy gap, if you like, and or, or has opened the door to um, ap you know, applications on lands that um, were, were applications that couldn't have been submitted in the past. So most unfortunately, I think is, we see it's just a policy gap here now, essentially, the vacuum, if you like. And sure, the Alberta Energy Regulator is the recipient of those applications. And yeah, the, the regulator can fill, can fill that gap. But of course, um, uh, the regulator is going to fill that gap on a case by case basis. And, you know, I don't think that's best for all of us. And it sounds like a, a repeat of the, the, the previous announcement, uh, the oil and gas uh, monitoring announcement, where no explanation is given. And so, you know, uh, those of us who are following this story are kind of, you know, fill in the gaps uh, ourselves. And one of the points that was made in the press release is that this could would be used to facilitate coal exports, which just seems to be a backward looking approach to, to coal. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, without more uh, discussion or explanation from the government, it does certainly allow the narrative to go down that path. And, you know, coal is one of those resources that um, is highly emissions intensive, uh, you know, certainly where it's burned. And, um, you know, again, I think, yeah, you know, Alberta could do itself a favor by uh, explaining the basis for the rescission of the coal policy and perhaps provide some comfort from a policy basis that um, measures are going to be implemented to ensure that, in fact, you know, this isn't going to lead to um, uh, more problems on the carbon emissions front down the road. Sean, thank you very much for this. Um, I imagine this uh, story will be ongoing for a while, so we'll look forward to chatting with you in the future about Great, thanks for having me again.